Hey there folks, uh, Joey DeAngelis here. I just wanted to do this quick video. I recently discovered this film called uh, Judex, directed by Georges Franju, who also directed um, Eyes Without a Face, which I haven't seen yet, but I really want to. Judex is kind of an homage film to Louis Fuyad, whom you may remember was the subject of Silent Film Saturday, uh, I forget which episode that was, but it was all the way back in season two. I believe, and that was a while ago. <laughs> and uh, the, you may remember, Fantomas uh, was a multi-part uh, serial about a man, a master of disguise. This film uh, is not based off of Fantomas, although Georges Franju, Franju wanted to do an homage to Fantomas, and this does feel like Fantomas on a lot of levels. This is actually also an homage to the of the similarly named title Judex from 1916, 1917. Also directed by Louis Fuyad, and this movie—it's uh, it, got a lot of stuff to it. You have uh, this banker guy who came into a lot of money not in the not in the most honest uh, manner, if you will. And there's a guy who keeps black keeps sending him like letters, like saying, "You will pay for this," and he goes by the name of Judex, which means judge or avenger. So. Uh, this man suddenly dies and is captured by Judex. And we also have uh, these two robbers who, who want the fortune of uh, the banker who passed away. And it's weird and strange and also kind of postmodern. What's really cool about this is that Judex uh, here is not played by an actor. He's played by a magician named Channing Pollock. And it just goes to show you how, how little uh, Franju cares about the Judex character. Judex character in this film is totally irrelevant. And he's cool, he's got the cape and the suit and like the fedora and everything, but he does very little in the actual film. The real star of the show is Francine Berge, who, um, she plays uh, this woman who was a, like, kind of like a, uh, a tutor for the banker's granddaughter. And the banker himself had kind of a thing for her, but she turns out to be like a criminal. And she's like, she's very charming and like sleek and sexy on screen presence. Always in black. Has like a very like unique look to her. And she's really the best part of the whole thing. As she, you know, she, she really actually follow a lot more of her than you do Judex, which is interesting, uh, in my opinion. The film, film titled Judex, um, you know, it's following this other character. It's like, he put more import- Fanju put more importance on her, and I think that was a valid choice, and you think about it. Because Judex is just like a he like a typical, like, pulp hero. But this character is like a pulp- pulpy, um, female, like, femme fatale sort of, uh, villain that I think is rather, uh, rather intriguing in the film. Now this is the, uh, Criterion Blu-ray. Let me just get this down. This is a really nice, uh, package I just got show you the artwork and you can even see like the his character is masked in this shot it's not even like you see like his face because in the film he's like a fedora you don't see he doesn't wear a mask he's got like the suit and the cape and such but in this shot he's like in the scene where he's like wearing a bird mask you know uh you got the front scene reggae character edith scobe who is the daughter of the banker and she's part of the plot and the reason why judex does not kill um her father so, this is actually a really interesting film. It's got a lot of um, silent film influences. It uses, like, the the, clo the opening and the closing of the iris quite frequently. In addition, there are very few scenes... There are many a few scenes where um, there's no dialogue being spoken. It's just pure visual and maybe some other audio, but even then, that's kind of irrelevant information. So, what else is there? Oh, and there's a lot of title cards where, like, it presents an idea. It's like, dot, dot, dot. And this film, oh my god, this film uses so much fade to black, it's ridiculous. Like, every scene would just end like this. And then just open up again like this. So, <laughs> it was like, it was commenting on how ridiculous it is, just like so often. And then you have like the absent-minded, like, detective. 
And it's like, he barely does anything in the movie. He's just, he tells stories, and he's actually reading Fantomas in a moment in the movie, which is, I felt kind of cool. And actually, at the end of the movie, one of the main heroes at the end is his acrobat girlfriend. <laughs> it's, it's anticlimactic at the end, but it, it's anticlimactic to kind of make a point. And uh, that's really why I like this movie. It's, it, it's kind of poking fun, but also like a nice little homage to... Uh, like French cinema back in the 19 in the teens so that's really all I have to say about this movie it's really charming to watch uh, I really like this dual format package Criterion has provided and I look forward to revisiting this one uh, in the near future see you guys later fade to black